Welcome students to our class on Muhammad Iqbal's views on nationalism. Today we are going to discuss about Muhammad Iqbal's views on nationalism and Islamic democracy. This class is going to be or this lecture is going to be divided into three parts. First we will discuss uh, the meaning of nationalism in the writings of Muhammad Iqbal. Second we will discuss a comparative assessment between Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's views on colonial rule and modernization and Muhammad Iqbal's views on nationalism. And third, we will discuss a kind of relevance of Muhammad Iqbal's views in contemporary politics or in modern political thought. In our last class, we dealt with Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's views on colonial rule and modernization. And uh, we discussed that uh, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was not only a propagator of modern education for the Muslim community, but also a supporter of the British rule and wanted British rule uh, for uplifting the uh, status of the Muslim community in colonial India. But uh, Muhammad Iqbal's views on nationalism are quite different, so that we need to keep in mind. Before we start with uh, Muhammad Iqbal's views on nationalism, uh, and if you go through uh, the references that I have posted in my Google Classroom, you will get a view on his uh, career, on his uh, early career and uh, life. So that part is there. So uh, if we start with Muhammad Iqbal's views on national, uh, nationalism, you need to keep in uh, two important factors. I mean, you need to keep uh, two important factors in mind. One, his views on ego and self-love according to Islam. So philosophy of ego, philosophy of limited self-love, limited ego, according to Islam and second his views his critique of modern capitalist system these two things are integrally related because at the end of the day he developed a critique of liberal democracy and which led to his path to Islamic democracy so what we need to keep in mind as I mentioned in my last class that to understand Islamic scholars to understand Muslim political thinkers it is very important to understand the link between east west and islam so you need to keep in mind that the thread or the interesting line is there between east west and islam so according to muhammad iqbal in islam the concept of self-love the concept of ego should be limited why because every muslim should follow or should guide his life according to the core principles of Islam. So religion was very, very important for Muhammad Iqbal. We all know him for his wonderful creations, for his wonderful poems, for his political writings, for his uh, spiritual ideas. He is known as, quite known for Pakistan movement in British role. And he is also known as the spiritual father of Pakistan. So you can understand that his role is very much related to his views on Islam and his writings are very much well recognized in Bangladesh, in Iran, in Pakistan and other Islamic countries. So what was his views on capitalist society? He actually provided a very strong critique of capitalist society because it was based on individualism and materialism. He believed that ego or self-love should not be excessive because excessive self-love excessive ego actually leads to the notion of aggressive power so what he tried to mention that the question of nationalism in the western countries where was related to the question of aggressive power if you can remember the same thing we discussed in Tagore's writing that Western nationalism was nothing but a kind of negative and aggressive nationalism. According to Muhammad Iqbal, according to Islam, nationalism was very much problematic because he wanted a political society, he wanted a society, a culture, a human life based on Islam, based on the core principles of Islam. So that we need to keep in mind. So he provided a critique of capitalist society because in capitalist society, nationalism is basically a factor which aggressive nationalism is a factor which unites the people. And for Muhammad 
Iqbal, it was religion which could have played an important role in uniting the society. So he always felt that the notion of Islamic, uh, sorry, the notion of liberal democracy was equally problematic like the notion of aggressive nationalism. Because in liberal democracy, some way it was the rule of the majoritarianism. If you can remember, the, this context was also there in Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's view that if we follow liberal democracy, then it 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 is basically going to be the rule of the majority, going to rule, going to be the rule of the Hindus. So the same thing was present in Muhammad Iqbal's writings and views. So he opted for Islamic democracy. Why Islamic democracy? Because in Islamic democracy, it's not the rule of the people, it's actually the rule of the God. Actually, it's not, un it's not always unity of the people, it's the unity of the God. So it's not people's sovereignty, it's God's, it's Allah, Allah's sovereignty. So that he always wanted to point out. He was also quite impressed by the ideology, Marxist ideology. But what we need to keep in mind that he, he made a critic of Marxist ideology because of its excessive economic determinism, determinism. And there he wanted to place the role of spiritualism in developing a kind of egalitarian society for all. So this is Iqbal's views on nationalism where he provided a very strong critique of capitalist society, capitalist materialist society. And in these societies, nationalism is always based on aggressive power. And for Muhammad Iqbal, nationalism was disturbing. It was not power, rather religion should have played an important role in uniting the people. So this is in a nutshell, in this short lecture, this is Iqbal's views on nationalism. Now, what are the main points of differences between Muhammad Iqbal and Sir Syed Ahmed Khan? You can understand that Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was a critic, uh, sorry, was a supporter of British colonial rule and modernization. And if you have understood what I'm trying to tell you, then it's quite clear that for Muhammad Iqbal, he totally criticized the foundation of the British rule, the foundation of the capitalist society, the foundation of this Western society that is called materialism, excessive ego, excessive self-love. So the first point of difference is on the basis of colonial rule and modernization. Because Muhammad Iqbal had his own views on modernization which was based on the principle of Islam. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan's view, if you go by his views on colonial rule and modernization, it was much more secular because the role, because the limited role of religion. Sir Syed, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan was not against religion, but his conception of religion, his conception of Islam was based on, as I mentioned in my last class, principle of ijtihad. But here, Muhammad Iqbal had given a lot of importance to the core of Islam in shaping the lives of Muslims, in shaping the lives of Muslims in politics, in culture, in history. So that we need to keep in mind very clearly. Another important point uh, of difference is uh, regarding education. That for Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, it was only education which was basically responsible or which could play an important role for developing the role for, for sorry for developing or uplifting the Muslim community's status. But Muhammad Iqbal was not not only played uh, an important role to education, but also religion for uplifting the spiritual life of the Muslims. So that we need to keep in mind. Last point of difference is on the basis of two nation theory. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan had, con had actually set up the context for two-nation theory. As you can remember, he was critical of Congress and very supportive of uh, British colonial rule. He felt that the majority-minority dynamics was problematic for Muslims, so had set up the context for two-nation theory. When we come to Muhammad Iqbal's views on two-nation theory, he was not very clear-cut on, clear on two-nation theory, but obviously he provided a spiritual uh, foundation for Pakistan as he had given too much importance to religion for shaping the Muslim community's life as a separate nation-state. He, uh, he directly uh, did not approve 
uh, I mean, the need for a separate nation state, but obviously, again and again, he highlighted that the community was different. The community, Hindu and Muslim community, they were different from each other. So that point we need to keep in mind. And lastly, if we come to uh, the conclusion of this short video lecture, then if we try to just uh, summarize what we have understood, uh, then it's quite clear that uh, Muhammad Iqbal's views are still very relevant in today's context because still in today's world politics we are seeing that how religion and identity politics are being interlinked. So it is very important to understand that we cannot have one and only or a homogenized view of identity politics or religion. Rather there are multiple ideas on or multiple theories on identity, religion and human life. And if you make a comparison between Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan and Muhammad Iqbal, then you can get this contrasting views of world, contrast, they are contrasting views of uh, life, human life, society and worldviews. Thank you. Keep studying.